What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Ari Smooth Face, Baby Face, or we back. I know it's been a minute, but yes, I'm back. We alive, direct, and in a fact. Today we're gonna react to 10 WWE moments that were oh characters, wrestlers who broke character in 2020. Alright. I haven't been watching, I haven't been up to date with wrestling like how I used to be, but hopefully they'll, they'll play some clips what I know and you know what I mean that I am more familiar with. Hopefully. Alright, but if you guys are new to the channel, smash the like button, subscribe, comment down below, and roll to 100,000. Let's get into it. There is a clear argument that KK <coughs> is dead. In an age of social media, it is extremely hard for KK to maintain, as the vast majority of fans know the ins and outs of the wrestling industry. Mm -hmm. WWE hasn't exactly tried to hide it either. But with that being said, the only time that KK is maintained at all time is on WWE television, where everything is still presented as a legitimate competition, and KK is maintained throughout all the WWE's programming, with the exception of documentaries that feature on the WWE Network. Despite it maintaining kayfabe at all times on television, there have been times in 2020 when the fourth wall has been broken and kayfabe has been officially broken. So join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 times WWE superstars broke kayfabe on WWE television in 2020. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. Ow. Number one, John Cena calls Bray Wyatt Husky Harris in a mask. The bell to John Cena and Bray Wyatt's Firefly Funhouse match at WrestleMania 36 involved a Cena taking personal shots at Bray Wyatt. Cena would call Wyatt an overvalued and overprivileged talent, and it was going to finish what he started six Wait, years John, prior. Still wrestling? Cena here was referring to beating Wyatt at WrestleMania 30, when many fans believed that Wyatt should have beaten Cena on the grandest stage. The kayfabe was completely smashed during a social media promo by Cena that was done to promote the match. In the promo, Cena declared that Wyatt was just Husky Harris in a mask. This was the first time that it was mentioned that Husky Harris and Wyatt were in fact the same person, as WWE always likes to keep their characters separate unless they're part of a storyline. It's why Papa Shango was never named during the Godfather's run. WWE, however, thought the breach of kayfabe was too far and quickly erased the video from all of their offline social media platforms as they clearly wanted to keep as much distance as possible from the Husky Harris character and Bray Wyatt's current character. Number 2. Big Show Calls Christian by His Real Name okay. Following the 2020 Backlash pay-per-view which featured the greatest match ever between Randy Orton and Edge, Christian made an appearance on Raw. On the show, Orton challenged the former world champion to an unsanctioned match. The reason for the stipulation was because Christian wasn't medically cleared, meaning that this was the only way Christian would avenge his fallen friend. The Big Show would also make a few appearances during this particular episode of Raw. During a backstage segment, Big Show and Christian were seen talking about the dangers of Christian facing Orton later in the evening. Big Show was even calling Christian J, which is Christian's real name. This is one of the only times that Christian has been called his real name on WWE television since he joined the company in 1998. Number 3. Randy Orton mentions the names of Edge's children. The build to Randy Orton vs Edge at WrestleMania 36 was well received by fans and one of the acclaimed segments involved Beth Phoenix calling out I'm a Lano. Edge with Hold a chair at the night after Hold the Royal Rumble. People give a lot of the WWE hell for being Fake, but you gotta give them niggas some respect, bro. These niggas perform 365 days a year, right? Every Monday, you know. Some of these niggas perform often. They're always on the road. This is not like the NBA. One week you're home, next week you know what I mean. It's not like that. Or as the NFL, you, you one two weeks you're home, you know what I mean. Or you have a season. WWE is all year round. So, come on, you can just imagine the toll that it take on your body, all that, ridiculous, bro. So, it might be script, but this, that, that, should, that should tear you down. Rumble. During the segment, Orton would reference Edge and Beth's children by name, making this the first time that the fact that Edge and Beth had children together was mentioned on WWE television. The segment was actually the first time that the relationship between Beth and Edge was even mentioned on television outside the WWE Hall of Fame. Famously, the segment ended with Orton hitting an RKO on Beth to add further fire to Edge and Orton's WrestleMania showdown. 
Number four, Brock Lesnar stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like when they do that for women, that Randy Orton. They, they make it seem like it's okay for for you to hit females, and that's the only thing I have a problem with. You know, that's the only thing. And you gotta remember, WWE has a lot of. It's not like football or or NBA where there's a lot of older people. Most of the fans are younger people, you know, so they may grow up thinking, it's okay for me to hit my wife. No, it's not. It's dancing to MVP's theme during the Royal Rumble. The 2020 men's Royal Rumble was well received by fans, and one of the reasons was because fans got to see Brock Lesnar wrestle for more than five minutes and interact with several names he's never interacted with before, such as Cesaro, Big E, and Keith Lee. The Royal Rumble also featured the return of the legendary Edge. However, Edge's return wasn't the only return during the Men's Rumble. MVP would make his first appearance in a match in nearly a decade as he would enter at the number 12 spot to a huge pop. <laughs> that fans weren't the only ones who were happy to see the former United States champion. As MVP made his way down to the ring to face off against Lesnar, Lesnar began to dance to MVP's theme song. The scene of Lesnar dancing was obviously truly out of character, similar to when he was dancing with the Money in the Bank boombox. The breaking of character by Lesnar was even mentioned by Corey Graves in commentary with a simple line of, Lesnar is dancing. The clip of Lesnar dancing quickly turned into a social media meme with fans editing other wrestlers' theme songs with clips of Lesnar dancing. Number 5. Vince McMahon during Triple H's 25th Anniversary Celebration On the April 25th, 2020 edition of SmackDown, the show was marked around a celebration of the 25th year anniversary of Triple H in the WWE. The segment was fun at first, with Shawn Michaels being very entertained and the segment delivering on what it was promised. However, then to the surprise of many at home, Vince McMahon would then join in on the celebration. Hey, of course, I'm in my cap. It's rare to see Vince McMahon Listen. on television. So it was a welcome huh. surprise. Y'all ever see Vince McMahon without a shirt? Vince McMahon is buff and ripped as f for all men. Vince McMahon is a freaking. You can't tell me he don't shoot up now. I ain't stupid. You tell me on 70 or 80 year old man though, that nigga shoot up. It's the many. My man would stand at the top of the ramp and call Triple H Paul numerous times during his promo, breaking kayfabe completely. He would even mention Triple H's infamous storyline involving Kane and Katie Vick from 2002 oh. before making a joke at the expense of Bailey and her awful This Is Your Life segment. Poor Bailey. Number 6. Brock Lesnar can't stop laughing at our truth. Brock Lesnar makes his second appearance on this list, but this time it was in relation to a segment on Monday Night Raw that fans absolutely loved. In a segment which involved R-Truth interrupting Lesnar and his advocate Paul Heyman, Truth declared that he was going to throw Heyman over the top rope at the Royal Rumble, not realizing that it was Lesnar who was the one in the match instead of his non-wrestling advocate. Once Truth realized this, he quickly undeclared himself from the match. He is traditionally hit and miss, as the majority of the time, comedy is done to make Vince McMahon laugh, and his comedic taste doesn't rub off on the fans very well. However, this segment was an absolute win for WWE and all talents involved. It was even made better by the fact that Lesnar broke character during this segment and couldn't stop laughing at how funny Truth was. It was great to see this side of Lesnar, and it was a side we'd never really seen before in WWE television. Lesnar was so impressed with the comedic abilities of Truth that he even asked to work with Truth again in the future. Number 7. AJ Styles dislocates his shoulder in the Royal Rumble WWE Hall of Fame that Edge's return at the 2020 Royal Rumble was a huge moment, not just for fans, but also for wrestlers in the ring. Many of the talents in the ring upon Edge's entrance weren't in the WWE when he retired, meaning they never got a chance to wrestle the legendary wrestler. Upon entering the ring, Edge hit AJ Styles with a spear for the first time ever. AJ tried to make the spear look as good as possible, and as a consequence, oh. he over-rotated on the cell, meaning he landed on his shoulder, injuring him in the process. This sent the rumble into chaos as AJ was supposed to last a lot longer than he did. It led to plans being changed in the ring and Edge and AJ communicated in the ring and AJ told Edge to throw him out because he wasn't able to continue. This was one of the rare times where plans had to be changed mid-match due to injury and credit to AJ and Edge, the kayfabe break of them talking in the match was done very discreetly. However, of course, as always, some eagle-eyed fans caught the moment. Number 8. Becky Lynch announces wow. pregnancy. That's very rare for wrestlers to reveal details I remember. on WWE programming. 
kayfabe is usually maintained in this area to protect- Hey! What happened to CM Punk? Ain't he supposed to be a uh, UFC fighter? I heard he's getting his ass kicked in, 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 in the UFC. And uh, the I remember Vacky G was pregnant. I forget who she said she was pregnant. For. Let's see. And keep wrestlers' private lives, well, completely private. Despite this, on the Raw following Money in the Bank 2020, Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch came down to the ring to address the audience at home. She then asked the Women's Money in the Bank winner, Asuka, to come down to the ring. It was here that she revealed that Asuka hadn't won the Money in the Bank. She'd actually won the Raw Women's title. Becky then followed it up by telling Asuka and the audience at home that she was going to be a mom. This was one of the first times ever that the fourth wall had been broken and real life implications have impacted the position of the women's title in the wow. WWE. Number 9. Asuka finds out Becky's pregnancy during the segment. Some of the best segments in wrestling history attained success because they came across as real. And if fans don't know if what they saw was real, it's more likely to leave a lasting impression. After Becky Lynch revealed to Asuka that Asuka had won the Raw Women's title, she then revealed to Asuka that she was pregnant. Asuka had no idea that Becky was indeed pregnant, so the reaction from Asuka on television was completely genuine and made this segment 100 times better. This could have backfired on WWE as Asuka could have been confused by the addition to the segment as it wasn't in the initial script. However, it really worked. The segment showed the respect that Becky and Asuka have for each other and why sometimes organic reactions are best when it comes to WWE and the pro wrestling as a whole. And number 10, wrestlers stop wrestling during commercial break. Now unfortunately, this current health crisis meant that we currently don't have an audience on WWE shows for the time being. Now whilst WWE has somewhat remedied this problem by bringing in friends and family of NXT talent in, before that they had zero audience at all. Now given the lack of viewers in the arena, when the show cut to a commercial break, the wrestlers just stopped wrestling. The Boss and Hug Connection and Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross just stopped wrestling. After all, why would you need to wrestle when there's nobody watching? Well unfortunately, somebody was watching. This was because whilst other areas in the US actually went to a commercial, some areas didn't. Meaning, they were just looking at wrestlers just chatting in the ring. It wasn't massive, but it was certainly funny at the time. But there you have it guys, 10 times WWE's I knew that was gonna happen, I just knew it. Television in 2020. Are there any more I knew that was gonna happen. happen, I just had a feeling like, ooh, that was about to happen, you know what I mean, but... Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it, man. WWE, I haven't watched that shit in so long. Oh, so long, so long. Well, I, I watched, I did like low peaks of it, but I haven't watched it consistently, like, actually kind of like who's new, who's still here, who, you know what I mean? I haven't been into it. I haven't been into the WWE universe like I, I used to be. I used to get all the shirts, John Cena. John Cena was the man, but John Cena, John Cena, I don't know what John, I don't know what John Cena's doing now. I don't know if John Cena's a movie star. Or, or, I, I mean, or bodybuilder or, or w, I don't know what he is, really and truly. But whatever he does, I hope he has fun and you know enjoy what he does. But oh shit, guys! Yes. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Man. If you guys are new to the channel, man, smash that like button, subscribe, comment down below. We on the road to 100 thousand subscribers. Show some boys some love for that being so. With that being said, we have an awesome day. Be happy, be blessed, and remember the world is yours. Peace, I'm out.